With us now are Matthew and Juan, and we're going to be talking about Ken Crokin. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. How are you? We're well. How are you? Fine. Thank you. Good. Very good. So, uh, Matthew, we had the opportunity to speak uh, recently uh, because you were partners with Ken Crokin. And can you tell our audience a little bit about Ken and his artwork? And then we're going to be leading into you, Juan. So we'll start with you, though, Matthew. Okay, well, Ken, uh, he was quite an extraordinarily unique individual. So early in his life, he hyphenated his last name from Crokin to create Crokin. Uh, and it was both a, a point of notice for people that would meet him, and he would actually quite nicely correct people from Crokin, which you know Chris, of course, his yeah. nephew, up to Crokin, which yeah. set him apart a bit. So uh, that's one mm -hmm. thing I would say that immediately I noticed about Ken, and I met him in 1997, and then uh, again later that year at, an, at a different gallery, and eventually um, we teamed up. Um, Ken grew up on Long Island in East Meadow, went to East Meadow High School, uh, and uh, his grandmother, after, right as he was graduating high school, was moving to California. So he loved his grandmother and he moved with her. And he went to San, the Bay Area, Oakland, uh, and um, painted there, had a life there, and eventually uh, came back to New York City where he uh, went to NYU and got a, a master's degree in art under the tutelage of uh, John Toriano, one of his great faculty. Uh, and so my teaching there and Ken having gone there made our teaming up even seem like destiny somehow. So uh, he was the visual side of our team and I was the <laughs> audible side, although Ken sang in a rock and roll band in, high, in college and he, he could do music too. Through. Yeah, I know that uh, the two of you both wonderfully talented artists coming together through the visual arts. And you, Juan, it leads in perfectly to you, Juan, uh, and White Box. Tell us about a little bit about you, and then we're going to be talking about the journey we're going to be taking together for the conduct of paint. Well, um, <clears throat> I come from being an abstract painter, which uh, <clears throat> allows me to relate to the work of Ken Crocaine in very particular ways, I will explain later on, if I may. Um, but a white box <clears throat> was a coincidence of a few um, international artists uh, in, at the moment when uh, Chelsea was uh, beginning, 1997, 1998. So we created this uh, space for uh, finding a very uh, exuberant, uh, exciting and rare examples of artists, of which uh, Ken Crocken is one of them. I just put him in the uh, seminal artist series that we began uh, once a year, we do a, an atypical artist. We did uh, uh, the Vienna actionist, Karoli Schneemann, who eventually did a MoMA uh, retrospective. Uh, we picked her up when, and she was on the, the curve a little bit. And Michael Snow, Con Conrad Atkinson, and Aldo Tambellini, the last one. Most of them have gone into, you know, great galleries. And so these are, uh, I thought since the moment I have met uh, Ken Crocan and Matt as well, that both of them uh, participated in many, many uh, situations and occasions uh, doing together this brave new world, things of sound and art performances. So I fell in love with them. You know what? I feel like the world has fallen in love with them. And, you know, it's a poignant time right now that I'm about to speak about is that the fact that Ken uh, passed away and he left, he left Earth. Um, and Matthew has been challenged um, with the ability to celebrate his life. And because of 9-11, because of complications, uh, he passed away and left the world way too soon. So Matthew, can you touch upon you know, the foundation and what it is that you're doing now to celebrate Ken's life? Ken Crow hyphen Ken. Yes. <laughs> um, well, uh, Ken was extraordinarily unique in the way he looked at the world, and he saw the world through uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson's eyes. And Emerson wrote a book, *The Conduct of Life*, about the connections to nature that we, as human beings, uh, strongly 
connect to. And um, so his, his work was immediately um, not just abstract, but it had a depth of feeling and vision that I thought was extraordinary. So um, we started playing together because I use catalysts, if you will, in my music making electronically. And Ken uses catalysts, in other words, chemicals of some kind to get the paint to move. So our performances were about him setting paint in motion and me setting the music in motion. And so we, we got a, a wonderful review in the New York Times many years ago, and we, we decided that this is our mission now, to, to, to expand people's world from the audible into literally the way the paint moves. And, uh, and we've been on that journey since. He was a wonderful teacher. He was going to some pretty tough neighborhoods and yet winning students' hearts and minds. And he was a teacher at Ground Zero. He was teaching English, but at night and the afternoon, he started a program called the After Three program because he loves children. And it's one thing that I uh, also gravitated toward him because of his way of getting to children in ways that other people couldn't, in my estimation. So our teamwork was about, we had a children's concert series. We had a project called The Nature of Sight and Sound which is why things look the way they sound and sound the way they look. And we, we took them to after school programs. We partnered with a cha uh, the uh, Westchester Chamber Orchestra. And so they helped fund us to, to work with kids about nature and sound and open their eyes and ears to all that's around them. And I, I, I cherish those moments now. And I, I've been going through his papers and his writings and uh, he was extraordinary, doing more than I even knew. So uh, that created a kind of bond that has been both rewarding to remember and challenging because I'm telling his story now. And before he died, he, he apologized for me to, for something he thought he didn't do, and that was take it across the finish line. Those are his words. And I told him that his job was to paint early on <laughs> and to stay healthy. He had cancer, and we knew it was going to take him someday. So his job was to paint and stay healthy. And my job was to, to take us to the public. Beautiful. Well, now it's time. Yes, now, now it is time. time. Yeah. And, and in a big way. Um, so there's the book, and then there's also the um, event that's going to be happening at White Box, uh, starting, mm -hmm. is it April 1st, and all the way through Earth Day? Or tell us about that, one. Yes, uh, but let me just add to this beautiful um, verbiage that Matt has provided because I almost feel like calling uh, the exhibition rather than the conduct of uh, paint the finish line <laughs> you know <laughs> so the conduct of paint will be the finish line and I'll be honored and white box the whole team to present the exhibition at a large space uh, El Barrio art space PS109 Okay. On 99th Street, between 2nd and 3rd Avenue, it's very convenient on the 2nd Avenue line or the 4M5 to 96th Street. We walk to 99th between 2nd and 3rd. It's a fabulous, beautiful school reshaped by the city of New York. And we're going to be uh, having an enormous um, exhibition that where we will bring the spirit of Ken Crokem back, uh, the sense of the garden here, we're going to recreate it there. But let me tell you, behind it all, and the fourth is the opening from four to seven okay. with performances uh, by Matt and Beatrice. Uh, but what I really, um, my job to add to the finish line and to cross that finish line is to provide your audience, uh, your beautiful audience in ours, 16,000 uh, followers of White Box and others through social media to be able to come there and see an exhibition of on the surface, abstract paintings. But I that come from abstraction, being trained by the abstract expressionist first uh, generation in the color field painters. Um, the work of Ken uh, has this other implementation, which is nature and this, the cosmos. Um, no wonder, uh, you know, the Museum of Natural History Planetarium uh, adopted him in an exhibition as the painter with 
the most uh, sen sensitivity and sensibility towards space at large. So when I know how to make an abstract painting, right, into it, and I see the process that can have more Eastern influence, which is he laid the paint, let nature through snow, sun, rain, etc., do its own work in a Duchampian style. Uh, nature began to finish the work. Nature was the viewer. Yeah, this is a very significant uh, artist, and his method is unique. Uh, so I would invite everybody to come, see for themselves. We'll be having some beautiful, beautiful installations of uh, screens with uh, Ken and Matt uh, working together. See how they create some of these artworks. So. Uh, you know, I hope you can all join us on April the 4th. For I, the will, opening. I will be there. I am looking forward to celebrating it. I want to be a proponent ongoing. Um, I am very happy that we were able to spend some time together today. And I know that this is just the beginning of great things to come. So Juan and Matthew, thank you so much. And uh, to Ken Crow hyphen Ken. <laughs> and your spirit, uh, we celebrate you, and uh, we love the arts, and it's what keeps our life going, yes. and to the finish line, and, right. beyond. <laughs> and beyond. So I'll see you there. Happy journeys, my friends. Thanks Thank for joining you. us a little bit today. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.